arm, punch bike, twisted leg had been a shocking stick. But every Friday night, Alf and George went to the pub. And they all were filled in the pools. And one week they came up. 300,000 quid. George said to Alf, now we've won this money, we're going to get you to Harley Street and get you cured. Took him down to Harley Street, the specialist examined him. He said, you're in a shocking state. But with operation, not with treatment, we feel we can cure you. But it'll cost you 90,000 pounds. He said, that doesn't matter. Money's no object. Get it spent. Get me cured. He's in hospital several months, in a lot of pain, but he comes out straight as a dad, cured. George said to Alf, now you're cured. We're going to get you a new suit and some new clothes. Get you rigged out. Rigged him out. One day he's crossing Mayfair to meet George at the pub. A number 12 bus comes, knocks him down and kills him. He goes straight to heaven. He says, said, Peter, I want to see the boss. He said, why? He said, never mind why. I want to see the boss. Made an appointment for him to see God. He said, now nah, God, you know I've been a terrible cripple all my life. I've suffered terrible. I get cured, and you let a number 12 bus come and knock me down and kill me. Why? He said, I'm sorry, Alf, we didn't recognize you. <laughs> coming round the corner. He took one look at Vicar, kicked her again and shouted, now when he went to church. <laughs> when they see a gallon, they say, five gallons of petrol, please. We don't serve petrol here, so we'll check the oil then. We don't check oil here. I said, what kind of a gallon is this? He said, I are I said, well, blow my tyres up then. <laughs> Salvation Army girl going round the Liverpool pubs collecting. She went up the land of this particular pub. She had to me, madam, have your permission to go round the pub collecting for the Lord? She said, of course you have, my dear. Whatever you do, don't go near that man upon the Nick hat on. He's terribly mean. He won't give you anything. He'll probably insult you. Oh, I'm going, I must do it. I'm going must do it. I'm doing this for the Lord. So she went straight up with this chap. Excuse me, sir. Can you spare a shilling for Jesus? He says, how old are you, my dear? She says, I'm 21. He says, well, I'm 79. I've been seeing it before you. I'll give it to myself. <laughs> Farmer's wife, come get an amateur pants lean. She says to one of the neighbours, what would you do, love? She put some paraffin down, and we can't beat it. Anyway, he told us what we did. She put a gallon tin down. Well, long that before, told her I went to the toilet. Lit his pipe up, dropped my stand, <laughs> up he went through the roof, there he went up in a tree, all his clothes were smouldering. She come out, she what's up, Joe? He said, I think someone disagreed with me. <laughs> double glazing, so the kids can't hear the ice cream man. <laughs> Englishman, Irishman, Scotchman, <coughs> Jew went out to lunch. When the lunch was over, the waiter said, who's paying the bill? The Scotchman said, I am. Next day, the family Jewish ventriloquist was murdered. <laughs> Oh, 
this, but uh, last week we were entertaining out at uh, Cadisage, and there's a, a, a big charity out there which Glenn uh, over supports very well. And I'd like to tell you that out of 32 years, was it 30, 32 years, he's entertained there, 29 of them.
act in the second bar. So Monsignor will be with you as the opening of the second bar. Now there's another little thing I want to mention. Our second artist in the uh, second half of the show is a member. And during the interval, 20 people in the audience will be handed a number, one to 20 of the members. And when she comes on stage, she will be blindfolded, there'll be a blackboard, and she will ask you the numbers and you must give an object. Any object you care to mention, as long as you make them vary, answer them loudly and clearly, so you can hear you. She's come out of retirement to do this act tonight, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. She did it for me last week in Aberdeen, she went to an absolute point. So, interval now of a quarter of an hour, Back. Three years to the days when, well that's better, to the days when little Willie Kilgallen <laughs> joined the <laughs> Irish drum and fife band. Without more ado, let's bring little Willie Kilgallen on stage. Come on, give him a ride. Everybody thinks that I have more than one character's vein. <laughs> there is only a only your photograph of it. Right. I woke up this morning, this is true, I woke up this morning about six o'clock and I said to myself, you know, how can I bring a little bit of variety into my life? <laughs> and all this all this has happened in the last few hours. And I decided to go back memory lane, as Len said, and take you back to when I was seven years of age and I won my first competition, as nervous as I am now. <laughs> and I'm going to play the first tune and try to imitate, as I did 43 years ago. Good. <laughs> Whistles, and that's how the musical alarm clock started. 
and started in a little village called Greenville in the west of Ireland. So you see, I've been educated tonight. <laughs> so this is a, a beautiful tune which is called Carolyn's Concerto. I'm a lot more settled now, actually. Do you know, I feel quite, you know. <laughs> and if any parishioners think, if any parishioners think that I went on a diet for this night, I didn't. <laughs> But I do feel really fit, I was surprised. Gentlemen, watch your wives. <laughs>
the normal thing I say, no matter how much you clap. Because at the moment I don't feel like nobody's child. As you said. <laughs> Slight pause while it sorts out the back in the room. <laughs> As I was slowly passing, and often so one day, I stopped there for a moment just to watch the children play. Alone, that boy was standing, and when I asked him why, he turned with eyes I could not see, and then began to cry. I know nobody's child. I know nobody's child. I'm like a flower, just growing wild. No mommy's kisses. me by, and I am left alone. I know they like to take me, but when they see I'm blind, they always take another child, and I am left behind. I know Just growing wild, no mommy's kisses and no daddy's smiles. Nobody wants me, I'm nobody's child. No mommy's arms to hold me and soothe me when I cry. Sometimes it gets so lonely here, I wish that I could die. I'd walk the streets of heaven, where all the blind can see. And then, like all the other kids, there'd be a home for me. I know nobody's child. I'm nobody's child. I'm like a flower, just growing wild. No mommy's kisses and no daddy's smile. Nobody wants me. I'm nobody's child. We are to be prepared now for our next artist. And I'm going to ask the stage hands if they will put the blackboard on stage. It sounds as though they've dropped it. <laughs> yeah, that's like Brendan said, I thought Gabriel had arrived. <laughs> but we're all set. Well, oh, not quite, you know. Now, I must ask. During this next quarter of an hour, we must have perfect silence in the room. Because this is a night that requires a lot of concentration. As I said earlier on, this lady has come out of retirement 
to do last Friday's show and tonight's show. And so it is as a tribute to her. She is the widow of Les Manterfield, the entertainer who did all the cruise ships. He unfortunately died in February. And she has taken on this act by herself. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce her now. Bring her on stage and I want a real Mother of God welcome for Katina, the lady with a fantastic memory. Come along, let's do it. gets them well and truly into her memory. You've got the chalk, I do believe. She's going over to the blackboard now, Katina, so I will hand over to you. Thank you very much. Does anyone hear me? Yes. I shall call the number, and whoever's got that number, would they please give me the name of an object? Now, that object can be anywhere in the world. Not just in this room or on your table, it can be at home, on holiday, anywhere in the world, and it can be anything. I'd like you to make them as varied as you possibly can, because it makes it much more interesting for everybody. Now then, I'm going to, when I call your number, now we may be a little bit hesitant during this act, because I really have to memorise these things. So don't think that I've forgotten you when it's your number. So I'll start off with number one, and if you'll call loud and clear, please, what you would like, or what, which object you would like to say. Number one. A bracelet. A bracelet. A bracelet is number one. Number two, please. A dinner plate. A dinner plate. Thank you. <coughs> A dinner plate for number two. Number three? Pocket watch. A pocket watch. What time would you like that watch to say? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Number three is a pocket watch saying nine o'clock. <laughs> Number four? I'm sorry, I can't hear. Malt whiskey cheese. Malt malt whiskey. Cheese. 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 Yes. Oh, we've got a microphone out there now, have we? So that's number four is malt whiskey cheese. So 
sovereign. Number six is the love sovereign. That's right. Number seven, please. Niagara Falls. Oh, just come back from there. Number seven is Niagara Falls. Number eight? A plectrum. A plectrum. I still can't hear. Have we got the microphone somewhere? A, a plectrum. A plectrum. Now that was number eight, wasn't it? A plectrum. Right. Now number nine, please. A cine camera. Very nice. Number nine was a cine camera. Number ten. Friday Badger. Badger. Friday Badger. Friday Badger. Friday Badger. Friday Badger. Have I got it right? Yes. Friday Badger. And that was number. That's number 10, wasn't it? A Friday Badger. I'm just going to say Badger for that when I come to that one. Friday Badger, number 10. Number 11. An encyclopedia. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh That was the badger, wasn't it? Number 10. Number 11, an encyclopedia. Number 12. A red sports car. A red sports car. A red sports car? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. A red sports car for number 12. Very nice. Number 14. A beer mat. A beer mat. A beer mat. A beer glass. A beer glass. The number 14, please. A beer glass. A beer glass. The number 14. Number 15. Can we each call out, please? A 
tree. A tree? Yes. That was for, num what was that? 18. 18. Number 18? Yes. Yes. Uh, number 17 was the Welsh dress, and number 18 was a tree. Yes. A tree. Number 19. The crown jewels. The crown jewels. The number 19. And number 20. Robert Cashel. I'm sorry, I can't hear that. Robert Cashel. Rock of Cashel. 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 No, it, it's, it's very difficult to hear up here. Rock of Cashel. Rock of. I'm sorry, are you saying Cashel? Cashel. Look, I say Rock Rock of Cashel. Cash. As in money, cash. Oh, cash. It's very difficult to hear up here. Rock, rock of cash. Am I saying it right then? Yes. Rock of cash. Now that was number 20, wasn't it? Rock of cash. I might say rock of cash. Right, let's give Sheila a nice round of applause. Number one was a bracelet, number two was a dinner plate, number three was a watch saying nine o'clock. Number four was the whiskey cheese. Number five was the rock in Australia, that's right, it is. Number six was the gold sovereign. Number seven, Niagara Falls. Number eight was a plectrum. Number nine was a cine camera. Number 10 was the badger. Number 11, an encyclopedia. Number 12 was a red sports car. Number 13 was a loaf of bread. Number 14 was a beer glass. Number 15 was a ring. Number 16 was a, a, a napkin. Number 17 was a Welsh dresser. Number 18 was a tree. Number 19 was the crown jewels. And number 20 was a rock of passion. Cheese. 